Hey friends, Christy here with Little Roots Ranch, and today I'm in the shade of the popcorn canopy uh, down with my dried beans to harvest dried beans. And so, spoiler alert, oops, as I drop one, these are what they look like, and these are where they're in the pots. Now, dried beans are really interesting because one, they're delicious. Uh, I find that they're really easy to grow as long as the rabbit doesn't get to them. Um, I did have other areas where the rabbit pressure was too high and they ate them when they were just tiny little plants. Um, but the thing about beans, especially dry beans, is that you have to wait all summer for them. And it's such a bummer to just wait and wait and wait. But luckily the garden keeps you busy enough where you don't always notice. But when you start to see them drying out like you can behind me, now this is an inter-cropped inter uh, plot where there's popcorn, which of course you can see all around, um, as well as down here, which these are dried, of course, um, are the beans. These ones in particular are cranberry beans, which are like a pinto bean. But I want to harvest them before it rains, and we're supposed to have some rain on Saturday, allegedly. Uh, now, one thing I will say about harvesting dried beans is that it's hard to pick exactly the perfect time because you want to let them dry out as much as you can while they are in the pod, but you don't want them to get any additional water, like from your irrigation sprinkler or especially from rain or things like that. And so that's a little difficult because, of course, you know, my corn and... Um, uh, bean patch is right next to my zucchini which does get water from the sprinkler and so I know some water comes over uh, but you what you cannot do is wait too long because if they do get moisture or they rot in the pod then there's no going back if you pick them too early then you can just continue drying them inside and depending on your comfort level um, I personally always err a little bit on picking them one tad early so that way I don't lose the entire crop. So how do you know if the beans are ready? So basically I'll show you a couple different stages. So this is when it's still green and this is immature because if you open this, if I can open it, you see how the beans here, oops, they're green. And so this is the same kind of plant. So they should be the purple and white or whatever, but they're not. You can see that it's, the, the pod is green. And then in between is this one that's mostly dry. And as you can tell, it's kind of yellow or whatnot. And then this one that's fairly dry. So you can see the difference in those, right? Well, these ones, and you can hear, sorry, I was trying to shake them. You can hear them rattling in there. So if I open this up, I'm assured to see dried beans. Oops. You see them in there? But a way to tell as well is if I put my finger, now this one dense, I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up. Probably, oh, you can see it a little bit, I think. But if it puts a little dent where you put your fingernail, then it means it's not fully dry, but that's okay. We're gonna finish that inside. All you need to do is put these on a tray, like a mesh tray or dehydrating rack, something like that where it can breathe and allow it to cure a little bit longer in a protected area, like inside your home, garage, somewhere like that. Um, but you're picking them before they get mildewy. So I'll put all these in there for all my experiments and I'll show you, it's, I mean, it's pretty easy. You basically, when it gets to this stage, most of them are dried out. And so if I'm being honest, I don't usually split them out here in the field because I'll do that. Like if I'm watching a movie or later on or something like that. Um, plus it's hot. So like the heat of the day, um, I can, well, it's cool under the, the shade. But during the heat of the day, I'll go inside and have lunch and then separate all these out and put them uh, on the tray to dry a little bit longer. But again, you want to listen for that. This one isn't making them as much. And then you just take them in, put them. 
but they're so pretty. Put them on a tray and let them dry. Make sure they're really, really dry. So if you put your fingernail into them, they should not dent in. And then once they're fully dry, then you can put them in a number of things. They usually stay good for like 10 to 12 months if stored properly. Some people put an oxygen absorber in there. I don't ever, I just put them into a mason jar um, and store them. I go through beans pretty quickly, so I don't have too much of a concern with that. Now, my beans are all ready and we've got rain predicted, I think this coming Saturday. And so I'm good to go. What happens if you have beans and it's kind of getting towards the end and you're realizing that maybe frosts are coming soon or a bunch of wet weather or something like that and they're not ready? What you can do is just pull the whole plant. Now this one of course is is dried out, but you can take where you can tell it's lost all of its leaves and stuff like that. And I've picked most of the pods out, but you can pull the whole plant out and just hang it upside down. Usually it would have more uh, pods and stuff like that. There's also pods on the ground and the pods I've pulled out. But, and this of course works, you know, especially if you're on a smaller scale where you have maybe like six plants or something like that. And you can just like clothes pin them to a hanger and, and let them dry in like a garage or something like that. But what you ultimately don't want to do is that you don't want to have, um, where they rot. You don't want that. You put way too much hard work and all that stuff. So you want to make sure that you're getting them out of the garden and that you are drying them out properly. Because if they're not dried, then you can have all kinds of problems like rot even after you take all of the correct uh, precautions. Another thing to note is that some folks have like little weevils or whatever that aren't visible. And so if you've struggled with that, one thing that you can do is take your beans and just pop them in the freezer for two weeks and that'll kill any weevils or anything like that. And then you can finish drying them out and throw them into storage and you don't have to worry about that. It's pretty good practice for, you know, any of the beans or, or like cereals, like, uh, well, basically anything <laughs> if you're growing weed or whatever. And again, on small scale or something like that, but yeah. So I hope that this video was uh, helpful as far as when to pick your beans, how to pick them, how to do all of that. If you're wondering about how larger scale farms do it, what they do is they, they harvest all of the stuff. So like the plant and everything, and then they do like a winnowing because they, they have just so much. And so they put it into like a large tarp or a large machine and kind of crush it and like break loose all the beans and then drop it in front of a big fan. And because basically if you were to like crumble this up or whatever, and the beans will fall down and all the chaff and stuff like that will blow away. And that's for larger scale. Um, for me, I hope to have that many beans, but the rabbits took that opportunity away from me. But for, you know, gardening or things like that, just go ahead and pick your pods, um, unless you're pulling the whole plant because they're not ready yet. But pick your pods, um, go inside, enjoy taking all the beans out, spread them out, let them dry so your finger can't dent them. Once they're dry enough, go ahead and throw them in a container and you'll have beans for the winter. Thank you for watching. Happy gardening. Bye.